Aw oh, man, this wall could really use some fresh paint. Swag, am I right? What the? Hey, I don't want to get in any trouble. I'm just a delinquent youth that's trying to express my complex emotions through street art. I'm sure it was very cathartic for you to spray paint on that wall. Oh, yeah, I guess. The same way a dog would spray urine on a bush or a fire hydrant. Very primitive. Sorry, I didn't think anyone would mind. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna go. Not so fast. I'm gonna teach you a lesson you should have learned a long time ago. And don't worry, this will leave a mark. Just let me go, please, no. Put these on, you're gonna need them. This is an Atomstack P7 laser engraver. Its powerful five watt laser diode is able to engrave custom patterns into wood, plastic, steel, and even stone. Oh yeah, that's actually pretty cool. I know, right? I don't know why you look so worried. The Atomstack P7's precision optics can help it focus its laser beam down to a 0.02 millimeter square area, which helps it resolve fine details and achieve incredibly high light intensity. I don't really know what any of that means. It has a lightweight and compact frame, so you can take it with you wherever you go. And since it uses a common 12 volt power system, that means you can run it off the included power supply through your car's accessory plug, or even off a small battery pack like this one. Who are you talking to? Yeah, you can leave now. I just needed to film an intro. Really? Well, now I kind of want to see how this turns out. Today I'm going to be checking out the Atomstack laser engraving machine. This is a 5 watt laser, but they say it comes to a very fine focus point, so it can cut materials much larger than its wattage would suggest. On my coffee table we have a bunch of materials that I'm going to try cutting and engraving. I've got wood, plastic, carbon fiber, stone, metal, and more. So in this video we're going to really put this machine to the test. Looks like it comes with a cutting mat, we've got a type A USB cord, power supply, some kind of control board that's built into one of the legs, miscellaneous tools and some test parts. This looks like one axis of the motion control system. It uses V-groove wheels that are very similar to what you'd find on a 3D printer. And here's the laser module. This machine doesn't look too complicated to build. It's basically just five parts you have to attach together. So step one is to just attach these two axes together. Step two is put these up on the cones like this. Attach these legs. These are all the fasteners I need for this part of the assembly. And make sure the wire doesn't get pinched when you tighten these bolts down. Step three, it looks like the belt is already installed on this axis. So I need to attach the belt for this axis. So I'm just going to put these two bearings on the screw along with the cylindrical spacer and then screw it in over here. Now I just need to string the belt around. I just put these belts into the frame like this. If I needed to adjust the belt tension, I could loosen this screw and slide this back and forth a little bit. Step four is to install the laser module. It has guide rails on the side that slide into the rails on this gantry. Just attach it right here. And then I can move this up and down to adjust to the height of whatever I'm cutting. All right, and in the step four bag, we have some stickers that we can apply to the feet. Step five is assembling all of the cables. All right, so I have a little bit of an issue right here. It's tight, but if I roll this all the way out to the end, it's loose. So it looks like I have a little bit of play here, and I'd like to take care of that by just adjusting these feet. So I can just pull up on this foot over here to make the laser head come down a little bit. That's more like it. All right, now it's about the same height no matter where the laser is in that axis. Now let's check it out in the other axis here. Yep, and that's about the same all the way around. So that means it's hovering right above the surface without the height changing as it moves around. Which will be important if I want to get consistent engraving and cutting throughout the entire range of motion. Now that I've got that dialed in, I'm going to put a little bit of extra torque onto these bolts so that they won't move from that adjustment. Now the assembly is complete. It only took about 20 minutes, so this is something that's really easy to put together. The next step is plugging it into my computer and programming it to cut out or engrave some different objects. I highly recommend you get some laser safety glasses. The Atom Stack kit doesn't come with safety glasses, so you'll need to buy these separately. I installed some software on my computer called Lightburn, and it's basically a slicer for laser cutters. It allows you to upload a bunch of different types of files, or just draw something in the design space and cut it out with the laser. So here you can see I'm in the Lightburn program, 
setup was super simple. I just told it to add a new machine and it automatically detected the laser cutter and set up this whole configuration pretty much by itself. Here you can see I've loaded up some files. I also created some QR codes that I can print onto things. I can move the laser cutter around just by clicking different places on the workspace. So let's say I wanted to put this QR code onto this piece of wood. So I can click in the bottom left corner, make sure that it's on the board, click the top left, top right, and bottom right. And I've just made sure that when I cut this out or engrave it, everything will lie on this board. I need to adjust this to the height of this new material. All right, that looks good, and let's try again. So I actually saw this on another YouTube video. Basically, if you paint a solution of borax onto your wood, the marks show up a lot darker. I don't have borax, but I have some of this automatic dishwasher cleaner from Trader Joe's. I'm gonna just make a mixture of this and paint it on the wood and see if it makes my prints show up any darker. Basically, I just took some of it and just dropped it on here and spread it over the top. I'm just gonna run it with the exact same settings that I had before. All right, so here's my first custom part that I made on this laser engraver. The Lightburn software only took about 30 minutes to figure out and drop some images in there. So you can get custom laser engraved parts in under an hour with this setup. So I'll scan it and see if it works. Oh yeah, it recognized it right away. Tap on that link and what do you know, it takes you to my YouTube channel. So go ahead and check that out. <laughs> so if we compare the original engraving that I was doing, you can see it's showing up a lot better with that detergent solution added. The nice thing about this is for the same amount of time, you can produce more parts if you're using that solution because you can move the laser faster. I got these tiles at a local hardware store. So the nice thing here is I'm getting 18 tiles for the price of one. So this actually turned out looking pretty good. That's definitely etched on there. If I try and brush off this dry erase marker. So you can engrave into stone with this tiny little machine and frickin' stone. Now if this were a darker stone, it might have been able to engrave it without the use of this marker, but since this is so white and translucent, the laser kind of dissipates through it. I think the marker helps absorb the energy from the laser. Metals are one of the hardest things to cut or engrave with a laser cutter because they've got extremely high temperature resistance and melting points, and it also transfers heat very rapidly. So as the laser is dumping heat into a point, that's being transferred away by the steel very quickly. Wow, I am very impressed. I think it's able to engrave these things because it comes to such a fine focal point. All right, so now I've got some fiberglass cloth. Oh, wow, it's making some noise. That means it's probably doing something. Oh yeah, that cuts straight through the fiberglass. So the reason why I want to see if it can cut through fiberglass and carbon fiber is this could be an invaluable tool for doing composite layups. When you're producing a complex shape that's used for like a car or an airplane, usually you're going to need to cut out multiple pieces of carbon fiber and then lay that up against the mold. And being able to cut out any arbitrary shape with a laser cutter would make this process a whole lot easier. Here's the USB plug which is going to my laptop. And I'm gonna show you that you can actually power this whole system off of a tiny little power brick like this. Being this small and light makes this machine super portable. You can plug this thing into your cigarette lighter and start engraving out of the back of your car. You can even take this around town and start doing laser graffiti, like some kind of laser Banksy. I think this laser cutter performs way above its price point. It used to be really difficult to get lasers that could do this kind of stuff, but with the Atom Stack series of laser cutters, you can get really high performing lasers at a very low price. So that was just a quick first look at this machine. I just wanted to go through the process of setting it up and running some laser cutter software. And as far as I'm concerned, this is one of the easiest hobbies to get into. It has a lot of advantages over 3D printing. It's more precise because you're not dealing with a material that's heating and cooling. With a 3D printed object, as you print it, it's shrinking. So that's gonna negatively affect your tolerances if you're building mechanical objects. With a laser cutter, since you're cutting the material at room temperature, there's no post-process warping that occurs. Also, you can work with a much wider variety of materials. Just today I was working with wood, glass, stone, 
metal, and plastic. I was even able to cut some advanced composite materials, which I think could have some pretty interesting applications. If you do end up getting a laser cutter, make sure to always take the proper safety precautions because lasers can be very dangerous. But as long as you're being safe by understanding how the machine works and assembling it properly, wearing the correct safety equipment, and taking extra measures to ensure that you're operating the machine safely, then it's a really great hobby to get into and it opens up a lot of doors to be able to create new things. I'm looking forward to using this machine in some future videos where I'll be making more complicated mechanical assemblies and testing its capabilities of cutting through thicker material. But as far as first impressions go, I'm super impressed with this machine and I'd recommend you pick one up if you're looking for an entry level laser cutter. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video, and I'll see you in the next one. This laser cutter... This thing can carve frickin' bricks. That's insane.